All right, great to have you join us on another edition of News Focus. My name is Henry Williams. We're staying with that story of the illegal pipeline found approximately 30 kilometers away from the Shell Development Company for Cardas Terminal. Uh, the terminal is said to have been operating for years uh, without detection. Uh, a, re a revelation that has gotten stakeholders in the oil sector and Nigerians crying outrage. Now, the NNPC ch uh, chief executive, Melek Hiari, told the Senate on Tuesday that the pipeline which leads to the sea had been functional for nine years. But word has it that this grand act of economic sabotage has been on since the 90s and might have been on for up to 40 years. And this is the kind of discussion we're having on today's program. Where is the oil sector going? Can this grand theft going on in the uh, talking about uh, oil installations and um, uh, crude, can it be stopped? Well, gladly I have with me on the program, Dio Fagbalu is back here in the studio. Thanks, Dio, for being on the program. And we're supposed to have um, Bolaho Olojede join us uh, shortly. Uh, hopefully we can connect with him as well. Well, let's take a look at what's happening right now in the oil sector. There's all of, a lot of reactions coming on the back of this discovery and many discoveries as that. Um, it looks like something very organized, Dyer. Um, some say it offers a glimpse into how much oil theft has, uh, the damage it has done uh, to the nation's economy uh, with figures say, of, of about $700,000 the last time we checked daily, um, right. you know. Uh, coming up. Um, now we have revelations. So, okay, new, new uh, coming from um, analysts, those who have been in the oil sector for over a decade. Uh, um, a recent uh, gentleman, his name is Alex. Um, I'm trying to recall his name. His name starts with Alex, and he came on at national TV in one of the TV stations um, saying that um, this is not a nine-year issue. In, 18, in 1983, he personally flew over, you know, that area. He was working for Shell then, and he discovered it. And he raised an alarm, but really nothing was done about it. Yes. Um, I, I, I had the privilege to have conversations with some of my own colleagues, too, mm -hmm. who have been in the oil industry for years. And they just, they didn't sound surprised at all. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, Somebody told me in private um, that he was in charge of monitoring, you know, these, uh, the oil, the oil movement and, you know, from the terminals to the, and he gave me all kinds of, you know, analogies. And I said, okay, so what, what's the bottom line? He said, the bottom line is they have been doing this for ages. It's always been. Hmm. Um, now, the technology is now available because all, all, the, all the, uh, the, the, the boys that were pardoned and trained to work in the oil and gas industry. You're talking about the militants? The militants. They have been trained in Korea and other parts of the world. They have come back with the technology to access these pipes. So I think that, is, that started the proliferation, which we're talking about now, mm. where there are small, small... You know, you know, organizations coming together and, I mean, drilling into the pipelines because they now have the technology. But I haven't said that. Well, are you saying that these people that were trained by Nigeria as a, as a measure to create um, employment in, in, you know, in the That's, Niger Delta they have, they have, have now become a we weaponized against the country? Well, well, practically. I mean, that's what's happening. I mean, they have, I mean, you, you heard uh, Tim Polosi, he had over 360 uh, you know, tanks all over the place. I mean, just imagine 360 of them, and they all had the technology and the know-how to refine the oil, to, to take the crude out and to refine it. But I am told that those, that is not the problem, that they are the least of our problems. Now, for them to, uh, for them to drill into a pipe or to make a connection to a pipe, they have to know when oil is being pumped. Okay or when it's not. Mm. 
Now, the bottom line is, that means somebody on the inside has to tell them, look, we're not pumping through this pipeline today, or we're maintaining, make your connection. It's a complete connivance. Like I said to you, the monitoring... Very organized. Yeah, the monitoring system for these devices is very extensive. And I'll try and explain the best way I can. They have vortex regulators and vortex, you know, checks. Now, you know what a vortex is? It's that spiral, the force that comes from the movement of a liquid. Mm. Now, they have... That thing takes its readings from the vortex. They have pressure, right? They have liquid... Um, gauges, they have temperature gauges, I mean, they have a whole array of devices that if oil leaves a particular station and it doesn't arrive at the other station, you clearly know what is going on at any point in time. So for them to have ignored it is simply because there's a connivance from top to bottom. Bottom. For me, I just said it this morning, Okay, it's done, it's done. The question is, heads must rule. But, I mean, we know with Barry's government, heads don't rule. They moved into the camps. But how can and they, they, they were, I mean, they, 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 captured, they got the hostages back, but there were no, mm. there were no, there were no bandits. Mm. No, but nobody's head rolls in Barry's government. Or, I mean, they pardoned their heads eventually. How can we, how can we say that such, that such um, an atrocity, such, you know economic sabotage on a grand scale will not have will not have people who are culpable. Will let's, not, you know, let's, will, let's, let's wait and see. Like I told you, I mean, they have these meters. They have points at which you have computerized analyzers that analyze whether the data that is coming out is right. Instrumentation has a capacity to recalibrate itself. Self-calibrating instruments. I mean, it's a whole, then, uh, that's not to say the screens that they used to monitor, them. they have these massive screens, and they can monitor every little detail. They can tell where pressure has dropped. They can tell where, you know, the flow is consistent. The flow is uh, 10 PSI yesterday. It's zero PSI today. It's one PSI. So there's no, no room for oversight in, in all of this. The bottom, the bottom line is, for this to happen, it has to be a complete... Uh, connivance, and what they need to do is all those that were ever involved in the process, mm. they need to be taken and brought before the courts now. It's not a debate. There, there's, there's no thing like they made a mistake. Do you, do you, yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. There's no room for oversight even, based on what you're even, saying. The, even the Tom, accuracy even Tom Polo that, that, mm. that, mm. that is digging out all these things. How does he know? It's too quick now. In seven days, that's he has done all this in seven days. Should we be celebrating the fact that Tompolo has, you know, has um, actually, should it be a case of, uh, all, all uh, has it be a case of um, a job well done for all, Tompolo? All we are, all we are going to celebrate is that those that put their necks around our necks have decided to release us, full stop. It's not, it's not I mean, they, everybody in the oil industry, is an open secret. I mean, there have been allegations that the NNPC is a cesspool of corruption, but Nigerians don't know that it was like what such are, What are the shells? Are, so let me explain to you. When an instrumentation engineer installs a flow process computer, basically every installation that is connected to that uh, um, installation mm. will have monitoring devices. That means what goes out at the other end, uh, 200 kilometers away, what comes out at this end, 100 kilometers, they all have monitoring devices. So if there's a shortfall, the system will definitely... Yes. And you, saw that, you see, the person, there's a, there are individuals that sit down in front of these monitors and are looking at the indices. When anything fails, the standard procedure is the lights for that particular uh, gauge changes color or sends out a warning, it starts beeping. That I'm either not functioning, there's a fault, or have been tampered with. So look, everybody, I mean, over, over the, the, the 20, 30 year period, where and this was going on, you know, is culpable. Now the issue is that I'm told oil theft is, is big business all over the world. So it's not odd. So it's not odd, it's not it a Nigerian the, thing. It is the scale. Okay. The scale is alarming. It's ridiculous. 
But what, when you juxtapose other oil-producing countries like, you know, the, the, the Saudi Arabia and other countries who are, have used their oil to actually advance, look, you know, advance look, their cause, what, look, what oil, makes it? Oil, in my opinion, mm. is a blessing and it's a curse. It's a distraction. Imagine if we went cocoa farming, rubber farming, uh, granite farming. We won't be where we are. That oil is a curse. If, if I had it my way, it's one of the things we need to shut down as a nation. Mm. Just seal up the world and say, you know, gentlemen, we're done. Everybody go back to your farms. We're not talking about the habitat that has been destroyed. We're not talking about the environmental uh, implication of, you know, the exploitation we're not, we're of not the resource. We're not the only ones that have been mm. drilling for oil and prospecting and, and refining oil. But dr drilling it in such a, you know... A, you know, a careless manner, dealing into, not taking into the why, eco ecosystem. Why, why do you think the shells, the shells of the world don't care about Nigeria? We have hundreds of oil spills every day. Precisely. And, and no cleanup. So we, we know the, uh, the UN... Um, the UN said we would spend uh, about a billion dollars doing... And, uh, it's exhausting. That's the best way to put it. You get exhausted when you have to have conversations like this. Because it's been going on forever. Does... does um, 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 the use of um, local hands in policing, uh, using of Tombolo the, as the... Uh, the, as the these these, these uh, illegal uh, connections were not discovered. They always... They were simply... We were, we were simply... Uh, uh, we, uh, I mean, what I mean is that the public now mm. has just been made aware, made aware of them. Everybody, all, even Tompolo himself. Do you think this goes a long way to justify some of the allegations about NNPC having secret accounts and all of that? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you find an NNPC director, you find, you find millions of dollars in his home. Where do you think he gets them from? I mean, all of them, from top to bottom. But you see, Nigeria is a place where nothing happens. Look, it's very clear that the only way this can happen is by connivance. Mm. I mean, you see, you see, the process is so intricate. Now, somebody was telling me, you know, we're having a conversation, and he said, you know what? Even the ocean, even ocean going vessels, barges, short, short range barges, everybody has a marker. So the Navy, the Air Force, Everybody sees a marker when it enters their territorial waters. As it approaches the waters, they can see the marker. Just like um, they saw the, um, the Norwegian vessel that yes. was in um, some, it takes some time. days to load a vessel. It takes days. It's not, it's not something you load in one hour and you're off. It takes days. Some say actually 12 days. So well, I, I'm not sure, but mm. what I'm saying, let's say it takes more than 48 hours. Mm. 48 hours is enough. For a marker that you have seen, and all of a sudden becomes stationary. 24 hours is enough time for you to deploy your forces and to get there. So look, it's just a simple question of every naval officer, every naval... What do you think the president's response should be to this kind of... Um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, scandal that has come out. What has been his response to every scandal that has come out? You see, you're making it. You see, I, I, I like, no, I, like, I'm like, sorry, my, like my friends. Of Nigeria, yeah, like, I'm, I'm reacting. Like my friends, I'm reacting the same way every ordinary we are Nigerian would react to what is happening. Sensationalizing these things, these things have always been known to them. You see, the only reason why there's a conversation now is because they can't run the economy. They've they've run us. They've run us to the ground. And I, you know, I always said this a long time ago. I said, you know, we, I, we call it the tragedy of the commons. Mm. I think it's Garrick. And he's always said, when you graze the commons because they are free, a point in time will come where there will be no grass to graze again. Mm. It's very simple. Because the commons are free, there's grass. So everybody bring your cattle. What will happen is everybody will increase their cattle. 
and eventually the land will not be able to supply enough grass to the cattle. It's called, it's called, it's a, it's a classic uh, planning, uh, you know, theory. It's called the tragedy of the commons. Like you said, we we are, we are not scared of losing the oil, are we? Because that's not the only resource that Nigeria has. But that's not the point. What we're saying is, some people have benefited to the detriment of the nation. I mean, some people have benefited and sent other people into poverty. This is the conversation we're having. Is the fact that there was just about enough to get around, and some people took everything to themselves and impoverished a whole nation. Isn't this a kind of crime that um, one would say the, uh, say, um, the ICC or the International Criminal Courts, you know, wades into because of the... The, the magitude and, and Look, the extensiveness over the de over you, decades we will, of, we will and start, generations. We will start another conversation there. We will start another conversation. I mean, slavery, have they, have they recompensed us? Uh, the, the, the atrocities of the French in Africa today, have they recompensed us? The, British, the legacy of the British, have they recompensed us? They have no... You see, this is the typical scenario. We are being exploited for their own good and they do not care. They will take us as slaves and give our, our, our ruling class mirrors. It's the same thing. Do they want to repent? Not likely, they just want to do it in other forms. Do they want to change? Nothing. This is a classical case of dragging everybody to the court at Hague. I mean, everybody from the beginning to end. How do you... How now, note, mm. our president is the commander in chief mm. and he's also the one in charge of petrol, the petroleum yeah, he's the first petroleum minister. So really, he's the one that should be fired, or the one that should be taken to court. How far back can we go in this terms? In th because you're looking I am at told, this system. I am told it has been forever. How far back can we go? Look, I'll tell you a secret. Um, a long time ago, after the company that was installing the fluke process computers mm. in all these industries. I mean, no, this, this is a company that had been training individuals for over 50 years. Training instrumentation engineers. And all of a sudden, they were supposed to do the Kaduna refinery turnaround maintenance. Mm. Go ahead. They gave it to, I mean, they put in their bids and they gave it to some Fulani or Ausa guy who shows up in his Bugabari guy one day and says, I was the one that was given the contract. Are you an instrumentation engineer? No. Ah, sorry, we can't deal with you because it's too complex for this explanation. Now, the North has seen to it, the leadership of the North has seen to it on a consistent basis that these refineries did not work. And because they did not work, they could not be monitored See, if, the, if all the oil was being refined in our refineries, all the meters would be working because they can't allow temperatures to rise beyond, beyond certain places. They can't allow things to cool beyond. They would see it. Does that give the credence to the calls for privatization of refineries? No. Mm. Not in the sense that we are talking about it. Mm. We need to start qualifying the people that run our industries. This issue of putting people there because they're from one tribe or the other, it has to stop. I mean, you see, merit, merit, a merit-driven system is totally different. It's a competition. And only the best rise to the top. Mm -hmm. You can compensate those below, but everybody strives for excellence. It's a nation we're not striving for excellence, because you know you can, you can just come from Kaduna or Katsina and they put you there. And this is the result of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the heads in NMPC you go, it's not a question. I mean, if, if this has been going on under you, it's a good time. Just as they benefited from the system, let them be punished for it. But it won't happen. We know that. Well, this is a challenge that my guest is throwing through the present administration <laughs> uh, to actually see if they will actually p expose and punish those who are guilty of, of this act, of this grand theft and economic sabotage. But before we take a break and bring you our next, next discussion, let's take some social media reactions. And starting with um, Beth, 
on her online and says, this is a true definition of oil thefts. This is the real deal. Well done, sir. But there is a higher matter to deal with. Fossil fuel elimination and the Paris commitment. And there we go again. It says, um, Kingsley says, such a, uh, such a shame that this happened right under your noses. It took a presidential candidate to expose this grave economic crime for you guys to go on photo shoots. Nigerians have been grossly shortchanged by this government. And at Hayato says, there is possibility that some of those involved in this crime are right there in this video. The sad part is this discovered illegal pipeline may have been decommissioned. Others are still there maintaining inflow. Lastly, this highbrow bronkering can never be done by the poor. Well, hard to refute your claims. And finally, when you pump 10 liters and the outcome on the other end is uh, six liters. Come on, common sense requires an extensive pipeline check, right? So when you pump out three ships and you get two ships only loaded, it means you are the one stealing the remaining one ship size. Stop whining us. And that's coming from at uh, Burahim, okay? Well, thank you for sending your reactions on social media. I keep saying them, them in and we'll find time to read them. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we're looking at uh, politics. So 2023 elections, so much is happening. The rallies, the foot soldiers have been rolled out. And yes, the candidates are clamoring for your votes, for your support. Let's go for this break. When we come back, we'll be having a guest justice, a legal practitioner is joining us. And it will be interesting insights he'll be bringing to bear. All right, great to have you back. You're still watching uh, News Focus on LN247. Just talked about recent uh, oil sector uh, splurge, or should I say scandal, of illegal pipelines. And now we're moving to other issues uh, as they happen in the country. One of the things we're talking about now is the 2023 elections as parties begin their politicking. And yes, INEC has uh, given... Um, the right to do campaigns since the 28th of September. And since then, we've witnessed one march after the other, uh, especially by the Peter Obi Yusuf Dati led party. Well, Sunday, the 9th of October, uh, was the turn of the ruling party APC as its supporters, led by ex chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of the National Union of the Road Transport Workers, uh, Musiliwa Kisonya, also known as MC Oluomo, decided to make a statement with a five million man march. Well, that's what, it was, that's what we'll be delving into on uh, this segment of the program. And gladly I have joining us online, Justice is with us Justice Uhebu, a legal practitioner. Uh, hello, Justice. How are you? Oh, good. I'm fine. Good afternoon. Good and to have you join us on the program, Justice. Yes, you're just in time for us to talk about these matches we've been seeing. Million man, five million, maybe we'll see 10 million <laughs> next. But bottom line is, you know, <laughs> the bottom line is, uh, you know, um, uh, some reactions on the back of um, the match you just had over the weekend on Sunday exactly by the APC in Lagos. Uh, some leaders within the Christian community decried that hardship uh, was heaped upon Lagosians, you know, during the rally because um, they find it hard, found it hard to go to church. You know, is, is there a legal, you know, perspective to this? <laughs> Well, actually, there's not supposed to be. But the only thing is that, you see, um, having the rally on a Sunday, um, to me, well, they have their right to to have a rally at any any given day uh, they wish. 
But the problem there is this, you know, Nigerian peculiarity. On that day, was uh, a big Christians go to church. No, for me, it doesn't really matter. But what matters was the issue of you know, trying to block the roads and you know, making it impossible for people to have access to wherever they want to go and all the way. Because I also believe that even in their camp or in the rally, there are still some Christians or uh, there are still Christians. Yeah. So for me, it's neither here nor there. But the most important thing I keep on saying every time is that whatever we're doing, whoever that is involved, we should not practice impunity which has been the order of the day in this country, especially by the ruling party. Well, it was good to see. Uh, one of the things we noticed, we saw armed security personnel led by Nigeria Police uh, Department, uh, Nigeria Police uh, Department of State Service, DSS, was even there, uh, Lagos uh, Neighborhood Safety Corps. In fact, they rolled out the cavalry uh, to support, uh, to protect that crowd. Uh, the LNSC, amongst others, provided protection for... Uh, residents and participants. Uh, some said, look, um, this is not a level playing field that is put here. While some parties are, you know, f find the, their hurdles are put in front of them to, you know, to do their own rallies, some, you know, just uh, have a field day. Do you, do you think um, that shows that 2023 will, you know, will have a level playing field? <coughs> Well, the truth is that whether they like it or not, especially whether the ruling party likes it or not, uh, Nigerians are determined by themselves to make sure there's a level playing ground. We know the antecedents in this country, especially this ruling party that's in power today, the antecedents, the impunity, and the way they have been doing things. But come to think of it, whether you are in the ruling party or you're not, it is the duty of the Nigerian police, especially because the constitutional duty of the Nigerian police is to safeguard and secure lives and properties of the citizens. Mm. So for any party that wants to have a rally, you know, as uh, protected by the constitution, lawful assembly, and for example, they are supposed to be protected by the Nigerian police. But here you see that the ruling party being the party or the people at the at the center they try to use all manner of um maybe well, how would i call it the security apparatus uh for themselves and all the rest but the issue is this when you are doing this for abc you should also do the same for other political parties mm. all right uh, you know um i want to talk to dio now dio you know uh, uh, uh let's say at the beginning of this this uh, midsummer night, uh, the, how do you call it? At the beginning of this dream called the Ob Dati, you know, uh, uh, you know, as, uh, aspiration tickets. You know, there were many, uh, many submissions by analysts saying, "Look, it's just a pipe dream, and uh, they have no structure. You know, they they have no, you know, they have no structure. They have no representatives in, you know, in the this the." second arm of government and and so it just makes it you know impossible for them to be a contention in you know the elections uh, has that been debunked with what we are seeing now you know uh, 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 happening with the million man matches we've seen all over the country the problem with the man that knows <laughs> is the fact that he knows okay but he's knowing is based on the now. Okay. His knowing is not based on the future. The conversation that we've been having with all these people who claim that the man has no structure mm. is a conversation based on the now. Anybody who is into modern economic or social dynamics will understand that. There are two things in a modern economy, and one of them is tangible, and one of them is intangible. So you have tangible, and you have intangible structures. But I guess they missed the brief. I mean, and one is not saying he does have or he does not have. He just doesn't have the kind of structures they thought they understood. But of course, nobody needs to tell them now. Whether they like it or not, the man will contend with them because he will be a third force. Whether he will succeed is a different, a matter, different matter entirely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he is a rec he's somebody to be reckoned with. He's a force to be reckoned with. And I'll tell you what we say 
in my field, people ignore disruptions. Because you don't understand it. There, there, there's no statistical data to back up a destruction. I mean, technology is yes. disruptive, the disruptive te te technology. Yes, but even with that technology, you see, we use inferences of technology to describe social disruptions. Even with that, the problem with disruptions is you don't understand them, so you ignore them. Mm. When they started off, what were they saying? They were saying, well, oh, he's irrelevant. Mm. He has no structures. Because their understanding was based on a past. Mental models, they saw structures as a party office, mm. not as, a, as an intangible movement. And they forget that the world is changing, dynamics are changing, it's a knowledge era, it's no longer, I mean, I mean how many people go to their offices? I mean, we spent, during the COVID period, mm. people hardly went to their offices. Okay, so they work from home, the, over the, the, over the, the internet. The dynamics are changing. Mm. And they sat down there and said, I, I told some of my, my colleagues, I said, you know what, you're wasting your time. Because... This is a new reality. We didn't go to work now. Everybody worked from home. Some people are still working from home all over the world yeah. because it is now possible. People have lost their jobs for that purpose. It's a new dynamic. And because you do not understand, it doesn't mean it does not exist. So for me, let them say, hmm. like we say. Interesting. Um, uh, justice, uh, as Dyer said, um, uh, our politicians um, have to deal with a different paradigm with, you know, with what is happening, the phenomenon of the, the um, take back Nigeria that is going on right now, right? Well, the truth is that we have very earlier before now started the issue of take back Nigeria. If you remember, um, the NSAS was one of them. And uh, people like us, there are so many four rights we have uh, tried to use to sensitize Nigerians and to take over uh, Nigeria for ourselves. We, there are so many things we have done in order to make people believe that power actually belongs to the people. There are no two ways about it. So, but for me, it is uh, an issue that everybody has to look at holistically. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the most important thing here now is this. Nigerians are aware of what is happening within their domain. And politically, for the first time, it didn't start now. At least it was also one of the reasons for the metamorphosis of the answers. Nigerians are beginning to ask questions. Nigerians are beginning to know. Nigerians are beginning to say, yes, yeah, this country belongs to all of us. We must take it one way or the other. Irrespective of... Um, uh, what anybody may think or what everybody may, may say. For me, we must be proactive and be courageous enough to tell the truth. And for Nigerians to know that the party as it is today at the helm of affairs in the federal, uh, at the federal level has fed Nigerians. They came up with all sorts of promises in 2015, which we are all witnesses to. Mm. But today, what did we get? So well, what are we saying? Well Justice, justice. Um, you know, uh, reason with me on this. There's something that um, some some watchers are saying. Look, there's another structure that even if will be a dirty ticket, if they even if they clinch it at the end of the day in 2023, they have another structure to deal with. A, a house, you know, that is predominantly APC and PDP that in short might make, you know, governance very, very difficult for, for them. Well, the truth is this, on a more serious note, um, if you look at it holistically, whatever structure you're talking about or whatever we are talking about, personally, I have looked at the whole thing holistically. And I have to tell you the truth, that come 2023, Nigerians are going to do the needful. The most important thing is this. If actually the vote of the common man will play a role, mm. the whole thing for me lies to INEC. If INEC will be proactive enough, which will have been saying and be clamoring and be crying since before now, but I thank God with what is happening today. I see this whole thing as a sense of sensitization and belonging by all Nigerians. At the end of the day, the obit something we are talking about, remember, he is a member of PDP before he joined Labour Party. When did he join Labour Party? Let me realize it to ourselves. So for me, I see it as 
uh, the the uh, a, a football game. Let me put it that way. Mm, a football game indeed. Uh, Dio, you want to say something about the structure that people have talked about at the uh, you know, highest level, We're talking about the Senate where, and, and the House of Representatives, where it's dominated by you know, two of the leading parties, I'll, the I'll, PDP I'll, and APC, I'll, I'll, I'll saying that, look, um, um, they hold the stakes. And probably Nigerians are looking at the wrong things. And maybe they should be more concerned about those who occupy those seats. You see, the, the question is, it, it's, it's a real threat. Mm. I mean, we're not, we're not disputing that. That the party that may win the presidential election might not have representation in the lower houses or the, you know, the, the other houses. But you must remember that there's the judiciary there that balances up all the arms, the executive okay. and, you know. And even the fourth round. Yes, yeah, so, um, uh, of course they will have to learn a new trade. What I'm saying, if, if we're reinventing ourselves, they will have to reinvent themselves in such a way that they parley with the people that don't necessarily like them. But now, in that case, they, have, they are winners. So they, they have joined the League of Winners. And then it's a different conversation. They're all, they're all winners. Okay. I mean, whoever is in the House, whoever is in the House of Reps, whoever is, uh, whoever is in the executive, whoever is in the judiciary, they're all winners. It's the capacity to bargain mm. The way, their way out or bargain Nigeria into a, a position that is acceptable is will be the next thing. And that is a skill yeah, that, so that, I mean, that, 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 that I, Yeah, that I, I don't like you mm. and I know that you're, you're come to change things. I mean, I can have a conversation. Look, mm. please. Mm. I mean, you could appeal to them. You could beg them. You could go before the whole nation and say, look, this is what I want to do. You know, if you guys agree, please appeal to your senators. I mean, there's so many methodologies that one could use to approach the subject that have never been tried before. So how is it that we have now come to conclusions without even the, the race being started? I mean, without the race being finished. When we, when we have reached that point, <laughs> as all people, we re-strategize. Do you believe in that uh, um, theory that um, there are non-staked actors who are more or less kingmakers in the country who decide, who must have a say, whoever... Um, mounts the saddle at the end of the day? Uh, look, listen, you need to understand how people like me perceive Nigeria. Nigeria is like a mine. And the overlords of the mine come in and they strip the mine for the betterment of their own people. This has been the history of colonization. They just strip us and they take what we have away. That's what has been happening to Africa. They just strip Africa. Now, none of our leaders has had the integrity or the capacity to stand up against them. The ones that have tried have been killed. And the others, I don't care. Now, like I said, the president of our own nation would fly to the UK for treatment. He's already compromised. Mm -hmm. The people that are keeping you alive, if they say they want something, why wouldn't you give it to them? So we, are, we have always known that Europe and the rest of the world has a stake in exploiting Africa. They have their own interests. Now the interests, I mean, which is what, one of the biggest problems we have, because I'm sure that countries have taken sides. Britain, the US, China, because they are just interested in what they can take from us. And they will back up individuals in this election, whether they are good for us as a people or not. That's why it's very important that we as a people, we make up our minds how we want to go about this process. Well, Justice, um, Justice, I want, to talk to, I want to come to you as we wind down. Now, some Nigerians believe that we should stay with the old guard. They have experience. They've been in the system. Um, they understand the dynamics of global play, just like Dio, Dio has talked about. There are those who also are, see themselves as kingmakers. They've been in Nigeria, you know, behind the scenes. They are puppeteers, and they decide, you know, uh, who comes and who goes. Do you, do you think that that is something to consider in 2023? No, for me, it's not a matter of... Uh... Uh, uh, considering who goes and who comes. Let's, let's, let's look at it holistically and be positive about this. The three major uh, uh, contenders 
in the forthcoming election. They are all if you if you if you if you come to that direction, they are all, all cargoes. Let me put it in that way. Trubi has been a one-time governor. Uh, Tiku has been a former uh, vice president. P2B has also been a one-time governor. So are they not all in the same pedestrian? What are we saying? So for me, I do not see it that way. But all I know is this. We must look for a more liberal person at this point in time. I don't know whether you are aware that I was an aspirant, a presidential aspirant, for this 2023 election. Mm. But I had to step, I had to, you know, break, calm it down for some reasons. Now, if you look at it this way, as far as I'm concerned, we must look for a more liberal person for me. And when you talk about the more liberal person, I have my own personal opinion. That is not the topic of today. I have my own personal opinion as far as I'm concerned. If you look at the, the, the flag of that, um, that PDP did in Akwaibo, you can also see the massive acceptance and some other things. Everybody claims to be, the, that is politics for you. But the truth is this, at the end of the day, Nigerians will decide. And there are so many factors to be considered. But let me say this, with all intents and purposes and all sense of humility and seriousness, we must be careful so that we do not make the same mistake we made in 2015. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? In 2015, we are meant to believe that this present go, uh, go, uh, president today was uh, the best Nigeria could ever produce, was the messiah that was going to save Nigeria. What would you get at the end of the day? We must be very, very careful. All right, I'm sure Nigerians will take that. So that, that. we don't go back to Egypt. Nigerians again. will take that in advisement. Well, thank you very much, Justice. It's been great having you. Um, thank you. Time very much. is running, and uh, I want to thank Dio. Dio, anything to add to what Justice has said so far? I guess everything has been said. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, hear what uh, our viewers are saying on this issue. And uh, at uh, Sholame Kun says, you want to have a glimpse of how much of thugs reside in Lagos? Take a good look at MC Oluomo's Solidarity Rally. And um, at Top France, he says, next time MC Oluomo should organize solidar solidarity rallies in at least five states concurrently. That's how to test the popularity of a presidential candidate. And Sheo Ghazali MC Oluomo gathered all the Agberos in Lagos to prove a cheap point to obedience. One will think Tinubu is contesting to be the president of Lagos. <laughs> wow, interesting. And um, Omeko says, Obi is the least qualified candidate with a second class philosophy degree. In terms of record, Tinubu surpassed him in Lagos. All right, that's another debate ongoing. And it says, at Chichi, finally, he says, after seeing the thugs and agbeiros that came out to rally for Tinubu today without the usual police intimidation and show of force, all I can say is vote wisely. All right. A way to end it. And do recall, um, recently gleaned off social media that um, those who did not come out for the, uh, the um, 5 million march uh, the, in the markets are being taxed 5,000 naira as penalty. Uh, well, that's what we g got on social media. If somebody sent it, sent the video to us. I don't know if we can put it up there, but 5,000 naira being charged to those who did not come out makes sense. for the march. It does and so make sense. they penalize them. Yeah, for it makes sense. That. So I, I you I got to know what you're doing and when you're so voting there. As you see in the market there, going around that and. Um, Selling that, that they don't pay the five thousand naira, uh, their shops, their stalls will be shut. Be shut. Be shut. So, Nigerians, as they say in local parlance, shine your eyes. Okay, going into twenty twenty three. Well, thank you once again, Justice, for being on the program. It's been great having you, and uh, Dio. Thank you very much. Thank you for your thoughts, and uh, you can pay for that smile. It's a, I mean, the million dollar <laughs> smile there. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Well, um, that's so much we can take on News Focus today. I hope you had a nice, nice time on this platform. At the same time, we'll do the same time 
on this station, Talking Nigeria, Talking Politics. My name is Henry Williams, and don't forget where you can find us at www.ln247.news. God bless Nigeria, and we will see you same time. Bye-bye.